Hi, my name is Sam Johnson and I am a voice teacher. Today I will be reacting to and analyzing Shreya Ghoshal performing Chikni Chameli. She's singing in a perfect mix. She's up at the C sharp over and over and over and over and over again. It sounds like her spoken voice. It doesn't sound like she's yelly. It doesn't sound like it's hard for her at all. I mean, obviously there's some level of just vocal typing that makes singing in certain parts of your range a little bit easier. And it's, it's very possible that she's just a higher voice type. And so this is just an area in her voice that sits a little easier, but I think it's more how she's approaching it. Like the, the technique that she's using just works really, really well to sing in this part of her range. So she was using a few sounds that were just a little bit flippier, a little headier. It just sounds more released. It doesn't sound as much like full chest spoken voice, right? Which shows like, yes, these are all just very comfortable sounds for her. She is choosing to go back and forth with them. Totally the goal of, of vocal technique. And she is, she's quite masterful in this part of her range. The drums in this are insane. <laughs> like this is, <laughs> this they're really high energy. I love this. I love the instrumental with this. It's just got such a nice beat to it. That guy also seems to love the drums. He's just like, to me, that means I love those drums. <laughs> Notice how little she's opening her mouth as she's doing all of this. Her mouth looks like this. It's not an accident. It's not like, oh my gosh, she's able to sing up in this area and it sounds so consistent. And she's also able to do it with her mouth not very close or open. How wild that she's able to do that. Like it just shows her mastery that she's able to sing in that area and also have her mouth a little bit not super open. It's not an accident. It's actually because of that. When we sing, we, we feel these kind of, our intuition tells us to just start opening our mouth a lot at certain parts of our range, and especially as we start going higher. And I think that a lot of times, in order to maintain the sensation of chest voice, we start opening our mouth more as we go higher and higher. And because this sounds like a spoken voice, I think that most people think that it's going to feel like chest voice. Um, and so they open their mouth to try to maintain that sensation. It's not going to feel like chest voice. It's going to sound like what it sounds like, which is full voice. It, it sounds like you're speaking, but just in this higher register. But it's because her mouth is a little bit more closed that she's able to get these sorts of qualities. And because when she does that, I bet she doesn't feel it in her chest. Basically, if, if you're having a hard time getting up into some of these higher parts of your range and you have a tendency to just open your mouth a lot and to get really, really loud, try closing it. It might make you flip when you're first starting. It totally might do that. Or it might just feel very different from what you're used to. Just get used to what that feels like. There's nothing wrong with that unless it hurts. Like I would be pretty doubtful that it hurts. The The only thing that might happen is um, you you close your mouth a little bit from there if you close it too much up in this part of your range, then it might start feeling really tight and not comfortable. And so a, a lot of people will intuitively open to get rid of that uncomfortable feeling, but they'll open so much that it'll get to another uncomfortable feeling. So you have to kind of find what works for you. But yeah, she's awesome. Okay. 
I have no idea how she does that. I love that. I love when I'm watching someone, I'm like, I have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> and obviously, like, I am not uh, very well versed in Indian music and uh, in vocal technique for this style of music because, like, yeah, it's very specialized. It's very, very specialized. And that's just not something that you tend to learn when you're going to college for uh, Western classical music or taking private voice lessons to sing music theater and pop music. It's just not something that you really learn. I don't know. It sounds kind of like a trill. There's part of me that feels like it It sounds kind of just like a regular vibrato, but it's so specific and moving between these pitches. It's it's awesome. It's, it's really, really cool. It's something that I would love to learn more about. So that that has kind of a uh, uh sound to it. It's it's closer to an er, like a retroflex er. Ha, ha. Again, it's just like a language thing, and that's not a sound that I use as much in my Utah accent. It's just not a sound that I use as much. But it is a sound that I think a lot of times people accidentally make when trying to sing Western music because it's a thing that you might unconsciously do like pulling your tongue back a little bit like that. And it's not as precise as this, but it is a sound that if you start kind of listening for what that sounds like in your voice and kind of just tuning your ear to that, then you can recognize, oh, this does not match up with the sound that I want, or it does match up with the sound that I want. That's the first question is like, is it an appropriate sound? Because no sound on its own is just inherently bad, right? I mean, there are some sounds that if you just make them over and over, you're going to hurt yourself. If in Western pop music, you make that sound a lot, some people will be like, that doesn't sound right. Because it just doesn't sound like English a lot of the time. But a lot of times people who are trying to sing in English will make that sound because they feel like it's helping them in some way. So just see if you start noticing that kind of stuff, because it's it's your the tongue kind of pulling back uh uh um and a lot of times that's accompanied with trying to pull the tongue the larynx really far down and everything and so the first step is just recognizing when it happens and the second step is giving your tongue something different to do which i think the easiest way is just thinking about what the actual word that you want is because again vocal technique is so dependent on what language you're singing in on what kind of sounds are associated with that language <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> Good. And then, yeah, that, that last thing, um, it was on the F sharp, just that, that little brrr kind of sound. She's great. She's great. Like, is she singing in head voice? Is she singing in chest voice? I bet she's feeling a lot of that in her head as she's doing it. But those are terms that just matter to describe sensation. And so they can be really useful within yourself. But a lot of times when you're talking to someone else, they might not feel it the exact same way. So watch out if you are falling into the trap of thinking that things need to feel the exact same way that someone that you respect says that they feel for them, because it's not always going to be the case. A lot of times there's going to be a lot of crossover because humans feel very similar things among just a general demographic. Um, but some people might feel it, but might not notice it. And some people might just not feel it. So if you feel like you're feel, 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 don't try to make yourself feel what other people are feeling just because you think that their feelings are better because they sing better than you. It's not very useful all the time. Anyway, it sounds like it, she probably feels that in her head a lot. I, I would be very, very surprised if she was feeling any sort of sensation in her chest, which is really surprising because it sounds like her spoken voice, which most people associate with her chest or with their chest. She sounds great. Uh, she does a lot of things that I think are killer cool. I love the the movement and just all of these small movements in her body that are kind of keeping beat and making her her voice a lot more accurate, a lot more in rhythm. So dance and singing can go really hand in hand. And if you feel like you're struggling with rhythm or anything, check in with your body and see if it's totally still because it probably is 
This is killer. Let me know in the comments what you think about this song. I would love to know some other like sick Indian music to do some reactions to. If you guys are into that, let me know. And if you are interested in voice lessons, go to vocalese.net and sign up now. Thank you.